AI hype is making it really tough for retail investors. All the thin twats screaming about this and that. There's too much noise. Too many stories about promises in the future. But one thing is for sure, AI is happening today. So when a company starts to show extremely strong revenue growth and they say that's because of AI, it's worth a closer look. Now today's story starts in the Nanalyze Discord server where one of our extremely intelligent and good-looking paying subscribers pointed us towards a stock called Credo. Now this was nearly three years ago when this individual pointed us to five stocks that they thought would benefit from AI. And when they followed up on those names, coincidentally, we happened to be publishing a piece on finding the next great semiconductor stock and Credo was featured in that piece with some comments around their lack of investor relations, collateral, strong revenue growth into China and a number of other things that we noted. But from around the beginning of 2023 when this individual followed up on these names until now how did these names perform and it's very interesting credo actually returned over a thousand percent indy semi lost 30 percent aehr only gained seven percent then you had Sci time up 245 percent valence semi not doing so well down 67 what it all comes down to is an appropriate benchmark. So just simply investing in the NASDAQ would have returned 128% over the past three years. So if you had a portfolio of these five stocks, you would have beaten the NASDAQ. Now, I also listed NVIDIA here, which is also up 1,000%. And I did that because I want to show you a classic example of where growth isn't being hyped. Now, when you look at NVIDIA, revenue growth over the past three years. This is insane. This chart looks like your typical disruptive tech company that's showing double digit growth every year. So this looks like a typical annual chart. This is quarterly. And with the exception that one quarter you see there where they're only up 6%, they manage double digit growth. And this last quarter, 22% growth off of an extremely high base. This is why it's the most highly valued company in the world. And that's also because they're printing cash. So not all revenues are created equal. When you look at NVIDIA's profitability, look at their operating margin. So sitting around 60%. This is what happens when you have economies of scale, what they call operating leverage, and they're basically printing money. And for being one of the most exciting growth stories in tech ever, they're actually not that highly valued. And these are some great charts. So the chart at the top shows that rapid stock price appreciation over the years. But look at how earnings per share, the second chart there, look how that has grown to match share price. So when you calculate price to earnings, this is very interesting, the bottom chart there, see how that has had a relatively steady cadence with the exception of one blip there. And it's actually sort of been declining over time. So it's pretty easy to argue. NVIDIA, if you look at forward price to earnings, isn't really overvalued at all. So the takeaway here is that a company company can justify a 1,000% stock price appreciation if fundamentals show good reason for it. And steady valuation ratios show you that fundamentals are keeping up with share price. So if Credo is, let's say, the next NVIDIA, then what do we want to see? We want to see fundamentals absolutely soaring. We want to see profitability to match. And we want to see the valuation maintaining itself over time. So when we look at Credo, Credo's revenue growth. This is a very interesting chart. So over the past three years, two of those three years, you would have spent waiting. And then here you can see really their NVIDIA moment. And you just know that management during that earnings call was saying just that. This is our big moment, our breakout. This is when all our explosive growth is going to happen. And indeed, that's what's happened. Here you can see the following quarters and that black bar represents their expectations for next quarter. And if you had invested in Credo, around that NVIDIA moment, then you would be up significantly over NVIDIA itself and our benchmark QQQ. So to have held Credo for that long to realize that thousand percent gain would have taken a lot of conviction, right? 
So when we look at profitability for Credo, we see some gross margins that are steadily increasing over time. You see here reaching the 65% mark. That's pretty strong. That's great for a hardware solution. Then we see here net margin. So if it was positive for a sufficient amount of time, then we could calculate price to earnings for this company, but we can't because they've only recently seen that become positive. So we have a tough time using price to earnings ratios to value this growth stock. What we've come up with is a simple valuation ratio, which it's pretty much the same thing as a price to sales ratio, but we don't use the last trailing 12 months. We use the last quarter so that it's more responsive. And let me give you a classic example of where this works quite well. So if we looked at the price to sales for Credo, we use the last trailing 12 months of revenues. We divide their market cap $26 billion by $800 million roughly. We get a price to sales of 32.5. But if we used last quarter annualized, it actually brings it down to 24. So you're dividing 26 by over a billion. The reason that we do that is so that it's more responsive. But then if we use next quarter annualized, we use that midpoint of their guidance, brings it down to 19. So the takeaways here are that simple valuation ratio is a lot more responsive and allows us to value things at more of a discount when growth is appreciating quite rapidly, which is good. And the other point here that's quite important is that valuation changes very quickly when the fundamentals are changing as well. So as we looked at in the case of NVIDIA, you can have a company that can increase by a thousand percent without having their valuation change in three years. That's really, really crazy, right? And when you look at the forecasts for Credo, so JP Morgan happens to be quite bullish on Credo. They're forecasting this compound annual growth rate for the next three years for Credo of 50%. They're expecting 100% growth this year. Where's all this growth coming from? What does Credo even do? Aha! So now we can start getting into information about this company, which is tough to come by because we weren't able to actually find any investor decks. It's all just earnings releases and 10Qs and 10Ks, but they actually have a presentation floating around out there from back when they had their IPO in 2022. And you see here this very simple statement, enabling every connection in the data center. So the acronym of today is AEC, Active Electric Cable. These are their key products that are driving a lot of their growth right now. So you can see these cables connecting these servers, right? Connecting servers to switches and such. But here you can see the basic metrics, right? Total bandwidth increases significantly whilst the power needed halves. So it's all about more efficient data centers, right? Because we don't have much power. So these products are selling like hotcakes. Now, now, these active electric cables, these are their fastest growing segment right now in the company. So driving all that growth, they're preferred over traditional copper or optical cables for AI racks because they're thinner, use less power and support the extreme bandwidth required for GPU to switch connections. And here's a risk factor. Last quarter, four hyperscalers accounted for 93% of the revenues. Oh, and they have a fifth coming on. So they talk about reducing customer concentration risk. Well, they likely won't, right? These hyperscalers will continue to dominate. So everybody's kind of watching these hyperscalers. And the first one that pulls back is going to be the canary in the coal mine. You're going to see sea level folks saying, wait a minute here, let's pull back to our, we, we don't really want to commit this spending, right? So this customer concentration risk is a problem, but it's also something that you just have to accept as all the big spenders driving this AI boom are a small set of companies, what they refer to as the hyperscalers, right? So the real advantage here for Credo is that they claim 80% market share leadership. So this was from JP Morgan's analysts who thoroughly vetted the competition and Credo's competing against some real big players with deep pockets like Broadcom, right? So they're often seen as a giant competitor with Credo gaining share in some niche high efficiency areas. And then you have Astera Lab. So Astera being a 
pure play AI data center connectivity play. So they say this is the closest pure play peer. Both are high growth AI interconnect stocks. And when you look at this chart here from JP Morgan, they talk about beneficiaries of an AI driven investment cycle, thinking beyond the mega cap. This is a great presentation. It's a great picture of how professionals manage portfolios. And they point to a number of names here of interest, Credo being one of them. I think that's in their top 10 overweight positions. They have a very large portfolio where they've overweighted some names such as Credo and some of the other names you see listed here today. So some takeaways. Credo's benefiting from a first mover status in AECs amid this AI investment boom, though larger rivals like Broadcom pose long-term threats with their scale and diversified offerings. So is Credo the next NVIDIA? Well, their success is certainly correlated to the growth of data centers. So your exposure from that perspective is really going to overlap with NVIDIA. Will Credo see stronger growth than NVIDIA going forward? Will likely coming off of a lower base, they might. Will it ever be as profitable? They're certainly doing a lot better. And as time goes on, JPM analysts see the earnings per share significantly outpacing the growth of revenues. So people always want us to end with some decision. Credo's a buy or Credo's a sell, or they want us to pull some price target out of our asses like everyone else does. None of that's going to make you a better investor. You need to decide what to do here. Take the insights that we've provided you with today and use them to make better investment decisions. Our plan is going to be to continue to get data center hardware exposure from our largest position, which is NVIDIA. They're the undisputed leader in a critical data center component, perhaps the most important, right? And when you look at this chart here by JP Morgan, rather interesting, look at this growth in data center revenue they're expecting from last year to 2027 for that to double. So that's pretty aggressive, right? Let's hope it happens. We'd love it if that happens, right? But we've talked a lot about valuation today, and I wanted to leave you with a video that we did on valuing NVIDIA. A lot of the concepts and ideas and insights in this piece are still very relevant today. So if you're somebody interested in the valuation component, then you'll want to give this video a watch next. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today.